Hello, I'm Morikuni Ueda. We will now look at how Japanese sake is labeled. The labeling of Japanese sake is regulated by the Liquor Business Association Act. This act lists a number of items that must be indicated on the label of the sake container or packaging. These are some of the items that must be indicated on the label. The type of alcoholic beverage. The name of the brewery. The address of the brewery. The volume of the contents. The alcohol content. The raw ingredients. The date the sake was produced. The polishing ratio of rice for the designated sake. A statement that the product must not be sold to or consumed by minors. In the case of namazake, unpasteurized sake, the label must include precautions relating to storage or consumption. The item that I want to focus on in particular is raw ingredients. One of the terms on the label is shuzo kotikimai. Shuzo kotikimai means rice that is ideal for brewing. Ordinary table rice can also be used to make sake, but shuzo kotikimai is much better suited. Basically, shuzo kotikimai makes the brewing process easier. Each variety of rice produces its own distinct flavor. Some will produce a mellow flavor, and others will produce a crisp flavor. Examples of the leading rice brands include Yamada Nishiki, Go Hyakuman Goku, and Omachi. Aside from these, there are around 100 other types of Shuzo Kotikimai throughout Japan. The Shuzu Kotikimai has an internal core called the Shinpaku, which does not exist in ordinary table rice. The Shinpaku is the opaque white core of rice grain. The starchy organization in the Shinpaku is coarse, so it can absorb the koji mold easily. Grains with a Shinpaku are ideal for sake brewing because they make koji production easier. Another ingredient listed on the label is jozo alcohol, which means purely distilled alcohol. Jozo alcohol is added to increase the aroma and bring out the flavor. So the inclusion of the item jozo alcohol on the label indicates that the sake will have an elegant taste and a strong fragrance. The label also includes the term torui, which means sugar and others, such as grape sugars, which can be used as secondary ingredients only in futsushu. And when they are used, this information must appear on the label. Some brewers also add acidifiers, as a lack of acidity may lead to an unbalanced flavor. When acidifiers are added, this information must be indicated too. So far, we've looked at the items that must be labeled. Now let's look at the indication of specially designated Japanese sake. There are three main categories of specially designated Japanese sake. They are Ginjo Shu, Junmai Shu, and Honjozo Shu. Each of these categories has specific requirements. There are a total of eight special designations. They are Ginjo Shu, Dai Ginjo Shu, Junmai Shu, Junmai Ginzo Shu, Junmai Dai Ginjo Shu, Tokubetsu Junmai Shu, Honjozo Shu, Tokubetsu Honjozo Shu. Ginjo Shu. The ingredients must be rice, rice koji, and jozo alcohol. It must have a polishing ratio of 60% or less. The ratio of koji rice that is, the ratio by weight of koji rice to polished rice must be 15% or more. It is also stipulated that ginjo shu must have a sufficiently characteristic flavor and color clarity. There should be no more than 10% jozo alcohol relative to the rice by weight. Daiginjo shu. 
The ingredients must be rice, rice koji, and jozo alcohol. It must have a polishing ratio of 50% or less. The rest of the specifications are the same as ginjoshu, but daiginjoshu must have a superior characteristic flavor and high color clarity. In other words, it must be even more refined than ginjoshu. Junmai shu. The ingredients must be rice and rice koji. Jozo alcohol must not be used. There is no specification concerning the polishing ratio. The ratio of koji rice must be 15% or more. Junmai shu must also have good flavor and color clarity. Junmai ginjo shu. The ingredients must be rice and rice koji. As with junmai shu, jozo alcohol must not be used. It must have a polishing ratio of 60% or less, and the ratio of koji rice must be 15% or more. Junmai ginjo shu must have a sufficiently characteristic flavor and color clarity. Junmai dai ginjo shu. The ingredients must be rice and rice koji. As with junmai shu and junmai ginjo shu, jozo alcohol must not be used. It must have a polishing ratio of 50% or less, and the ratio of koji rice must be 15% or more. Junmai dai ginjo shu should also have a superior characteristic flavor and high color clarity. In other words, it must be even more refined than junmai ginjo shu. Tokubetsu Junmai Shu. The ingredients must be rice and rice koji. It must have a polishing ratio of 60% or less. Once again, this sake must be brewed using a special method without adding alcohol. It must have good flavor and high color clarity. Hon Jozo Shu. The ingredients must be rice rice koji, and jozo alcohol. It must have a polishing ratio of 70% or less. The ratio of koji rice must be 15% or more. It must have good flavor and color clarity. Tokubetsu hon jozo shu. The ingredients must be rice, rice koji, and jozo alcohol. It must have a polishing ratio of 60% or less. The koji rice used must be 15% or more. It must have good flavor and high color clarity. The polishing ratio is the degree to which rice grains are polished down. For example, if original unpolished rice weighs 100 kilograms, and it is polished down until it weighs 75 kilograms, the polishing ratio is 75%. Why do brewers have to polish the rice? Unpolished rice grains will not absorb very much water, even if soaked. If the rice does not absorb enough water, it cannot be steamed sufficiently. So if you don't polish the rice, you can't create good steamed rice. Why is it deemed important to have a low polishing ratio? The outer parts of the rice grains contain many nutrients such as proteins, lipids, ash, and vitamins. If these things remain, they will accelerate the cultivation of koji mold for the fermentation of yeast, which will make it impossible to achieve a good quality sake. A high polishing ratio will also degrade the quality of the resulting sake by causing tinting and by excessively accelerating the maturation process. So the purpose of polishing rice is to remove these unwanted elements. Now let's look at optional information that brewers can indicate on the label if the product meets their particular requirements. Let's go through the list of optional items. The first optional item is variety of rice used. When the ratio of specific variety of rice used exceeds 50%, this variety may be indicated on the label. In such cases, the ratio of the variety must also be indicated. 
The next optional item is production locality. The production locality of sake may be indicated on the label if the sake was entirely produced in that locality. Next is age, which refers to the number of years of storage. If the product has been stored for more than a year, the age of the sake may be stated in years, with fractions of a year rounded down. The term genshu may be indicated on the label of sake that has not been diluted with water after production to alter the alcohol content. The term namizake may be indicated on the label of the sake that has not undergone any form of pasteurization after production. The term nama chozo shu may be indicated on the label of the sake that is stored without pasteurization after production, but is pasteurized at the time of shipment. The term ki ipon may be indicated on the label of junmai shu that has been produced entirely at a single place of manufacture. The term taruzake may be indicated on the label of the sake that has been stored in a wooden cask and has acquired a wood aroma. There are various other terms such as gokujo, ryuryo, and kokyu, which are intended to convey an impression of good quality. In cases where there are multiple products of the same type or brand, these terms may be used on a label to indicate a product that is superior compared to the brewer's other products. Finally, there are statements concerning awards. A statement concerning receipt of an award may be inserted on the label of sake stored in identical containers to sake that has received such an award from a public body. There are also items that may not be shown on the container or packaging of sake. These include wording such as Saiko, best, Daiichi, number one, or Daihyo, leading, implying the product is the best in the industry. It is also prohibited to state purveyor to the imperial household agency or similar wording. Finally, there are award descriptions. These indicate receipt of an award from a public organization and may be included on the label of the sake that is stored in an identical container to the sake that received the award. I hope my talk today will help you when selecting Japanese sake.